So I have created five topics to discuss today based off of these three pillars to create the optimal guide for a healthier, happier, longer life. And really, this is the simplest way to get the most out of your life in the easiest way possible. And that is what I have targeted. I wanted to narrow things down. I've pulled information from functional medicine, natural living, and blue zones. If you're familiar with all three, fantastic. If not, functional medicine refers to a more holistic approach to preventative care and also treatment. Usually a functional medical doctor will treat with lifestyle choices, such as exercise, things like that, and food as medicine. Natural living is pretty much exactly what you probably think. It is opting for more natural lifestyle choices in your home, in your body, overall. Blue zones is referring to places across the globe where people are living well into their 90s and even surpassing into over 100 years old. These areas have been heavily researched. They have found certain correlations between each blue zone into why people are living longer and healthier lives. The first one is meaningful relationships. And in many ways, this is the most important one because if your relationships are strong, you're more likely to do the other topics that we're gonna discuss as well. Who you surround yourself with is going to massively impact your life. When I talk about meaningful relationships, I mean having deep, meaningful friendships, people that you can really unload some of your burdens, your, your, your life struggles with, as well as having a, a deep, loving, romantic relationship as well having somebody, a trusted partner that is able to support you and support both your, your emotional needs, but also your, your lifestyle needs. And in both areas, having a sense of closeness, someone that you can snuggle up to, someone that when they hug you, you feel the love, you feel that connection. It, it gives you so much more than you can even imagine for a longer, healthier lifestyle. Being able to count on people is not a luxury, it's a necessity. The next category is health. And when we talk about health, we're looking at health in a holistic way. All of functional medicine and all the natural living and all of blue zones, eating real food, as organic as possible, and, and getting rid of anything that's processed. So anything that comes in a package, essentially, is going to be ultra processed or processed of some sort. Getting rid of the junk and getting more real nutrient dense food. Another one that most of us do not get enough of is fiber. Ha getting enough fiber is so crucial for your body to work optimally. Nuts and seeds give is a great source of fiber, as well as fruit and vegetables as well. Having fermented foods, feeding that microbiome, we see more and more how important it is to have fermented foods, having those rich probiotics feed our gut microbes. And in general, eating more fruit and veg, less carbohydrates, unless they're complex carbohydrates, such as beans and legumes. With that said, most of the blue zone areas, surprisingly, they don't eat a huge amount of meat. So opting for a little less meat in your diet, you don't need as much as you think. Vitamins, many of us are vitamin deficient, specifically those of us that live in non-sunny climates, such as me here in England, most of us need to supplement with vitamin D3 as well as most of our vegetables are not as nutrient dense as they once were. So having, making sure that we get vitamin B supplements is another really important one, as well as minerals. I've been so interested as of late in researching into minerals, such as magnesium, potassium, our body, brain, everything needs, and most of us do not get as much as we need which is why I supplement with all three of these. But that said too, one of my favorite things to do is fast. I look at our ancestors and they, they didn't have refrigerators, they didn't have food on demand. They had to go out and forage and hunt. And so often they would go out, they wouldn't have food for 24 hours sometimes. Giving the body time to not digest and pull nutrients, but to, to heal. This is your body's time to heal and to repair and to get rid of any junk. Think of it like this. How often do you clean inside your cupboards? How often are you able to organize that drawer? How often are you able to wipe down the walls? And, and the, if you start thinking about all the little things that you just don't have time in the week to do to clean your house, you do the the basics, but, but rarely do you get that time to like, like I said, clean in the cupboards, take out all the cutlery and vacuum under, you know, those types of things. That is essentially the mindset you have to have for your body. If you're having three meals a day, every single day, and not giving your body that time, that stretch to be able to clean those cupboards, those cupboards are never gonna get clean inside your body. <laughs> 
I fast twice a week. I do a 17 hour fast and then I do a 20 to 24 hour fast once a week as well. Also, try not to eat two to three hours before bed and I try not to break my fast until about two hours after I wake up. So that is kind of my format and based off of a lot of the research within functional medicine and blue zones that, that matches really well for a fasting routine. Another area that we hear all the time, and I like to call this category movement, because it's not about exercise, it's about moving your body, whether that's through free flow, like walking and, and running and doing certain stretching, or, or, or even I count movement as cleaning your house, getting up, bending down, lifting, all of those things count as movement, moving your body particularly what we see a lot in blue zone areas and, and what a lot of functional medical doctors talk about is resistance training. When I talk about resistance training, I don't necessarily mean being super buff, going to the gym and bench pressing and, and lifting weights. It can mean as simple as like I have these resistant bands and they're essentially just bands that you lift up and down and they, they help build those muscles. Yes, weights do the trick too, but anything that allows your, your muscles to get engaged and strengthen is so, so, so important as we get older. As well as you see in blue zones, the elderly having to walk a lot, walk up hills, walk up stairs in order to get where they need to go. Ditching the elevator and opting for those stairs can be a great way to get your body engaged, to get those muscles engaged. A great segue into the next one, movement also is a great way to relieve stress and anxiety. It's really good for your mental health. So the next category is mental health. Mental health is such an important pillar in order to be a, a stable, well-rounded individual. We all have our own issues. We all are, are struggling in some way. One of the biggest ones that I hear a lot, particularly within the psychology world, within this holistic approach, is dealing with your trauma. Almost everyone on this planet has some form of trauma, something that has happened in their life that has really affected their decision-making, that has shaken their core and that lingers with you that doesn't go away and really sitting down and dealing with it whether that be with a psychologist whether that being with a specific therapist whether that be through reading a book you know there's there's lots of ways that you can deal with your trauma but not ignoring it dealing with it because later on that can cause many many different forms of diseases when we look at optimal health as well happier, healthier, longer. Most of these types of people, they, they, they meditate. They have forms of relaxing their mind in this chaotic world that we're living in. Relaxing the mind can be such a peaceful way to relax the body. Another one that I do a lot is grounding. Grounding is where you actually go outside. You can get grounding mats, mind you, as well, but they're very, very expensive. Going outside for ideally about 30 minutes a day, connecting to the earth, so that means no shoes, standing on stones, standing on grass, standing on dirt or sand, something on that form. And the energy from the earth helps the body repair. I could get into detail on it, but essentially it just helps the body repair. So mental health well-being can mean a lot of different things overall. It can mean you getting those nature walks. It could mean you having that, that 15 minute meditation a day. It could mean being able to read that book quietly in a corner for, for an hour. And whatever that looks like for you, cherish it, bring it more into your life. I wanna leave you with one last topic, which to me is, is something we, we don't always think about when it comes to health and happiness and, and just overall well being motivation. As humans, we need some form of push, some form of motivation, some form of sense of belonging. And really in Blue Zones, for example, they talk about a sense of purpose in these communities, that, that people have their roles, people are needed within this community, within these tribes. And that is a will to, to, to keep moving, to get out and, and connect, because you're needed, you have a sense of purpose. This might look so different to everyone, but really connecting to it, what is my sense of purpose? Why am I here? What is important? Why am I important? And for me, for example, my sense of purpose changed when I became a mother. Now my sense of purpose is, is being a mother, being there as much as possible for my daughter. It's not about my needs, it's about her needs. It could be their job. And that's why we see a lot of the times in these communities when people retire, they tend to decline. Their health goes right with them because their sense of purpose is now gone. So making sure if you're retiring, having a new sense of purpose. It, it is constantly changing. You never have to be stuck in one sense of purpose. It can change with this motivation category as well. One thing, actually a few of the functional medical doctors that I follow, they talk a lot about 
keeping your brain going, right? And especially as we get older, learning new things is so important. Being stuck in a rut doing the same thing over again isn't fun for anyone. So bringing in something new, whether that be, oh, I don't know anything about orangutans, so I'm gonna put on a National Geographic about orangutans. I'm gonna learn all about orangutans. Cool, go for it. Uh, picking up new skill sets, learning new things can be such a great way to engaging your mind and feeling fulfilled at the end of the day. Thanks again so much for watching. I hope some of these topics have interest to you. It's something that you might impl start implementing in your life. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I can't grow if my channel doesn't grow. So really, really appreciate any support.